This is a question. The journey between preparation and the ultimate is very long. From the seed state to ultimate flowering is very long. During this state there is a possibility of suffering. Is there any possibility of peace? Is there any possibility of harmony? It all depends on you. It depends on your approach, on what attitude you take about it. Waiting can become a great joy. There is a great waiting from preparation to ultimate. All that we do, zikr, fiqh, maraqba, these are all preparation for the ultimate to happen. The ultimate happened just like that, look, it happens. The river has to travel miles and miles. Sometimes its route is turbulent. Then in a flash, the drop merges in the ocean. Waiting can become a great joy if you trust that it is going to happen. If you trust that it is coming closer every moment, you can do an exercise for it. Every morning I do exercise in certain numbers, but on fingers you cannot count 500 or 300. The journey of 300 push-ups is very long. You may feel that it will take a long time, a lot of efforts. I do in small bits, divide it into tens. When I complete a round of 10, from 30 it reaches to 40. I have covered a certain distance. Every moment, with every 10, I come closer to the very moment when 300 will be completed. If you trust, it has already started happening because you have started moving towards it, then each moment that passes makes you joyous. The home is coming closer and closer with every moment. With every 10, I am coming closer to the ultimate, the final, when the set of 300 exercise will finish on this particular day. But you can be miserable if you take the other attitude. How long do I have to wait? How far is the goal? Why, I have, why have I to wait for so long? Why have others reached? Why are others reaching before me? Then you can create a thousand and one problems for yourself and you can get miserable. You remember everyone walks on his own feet. You start the journey at a particular time. You have your vehicle. If you have to go to a particular place, where people are going in different batches in their cars. Each car may begin at, a, at the same time, but in between there may be other cars may come in. One may reach before the other, but there is no problem. You keep on waiting for the other to come in to hop in the place where you have to go for entertainment. It all depends on the individual capabilities. But if you are bothered about it, why are others reaching before me? Then you can create a thousand and one problems for yourself and can get miserable. And remember the law is that the more miserable you get in your waiting, the longer the waiting will be because godliness 
the ultimate cannot happen in a miserable mind. The happier the waiting, the closer you are coming. Look at the children, they are very happy every moment. And they finish the job faster than the elders. I recall many years ago when I was a little child. I was staying during the summer vacation at the shrine of Sufi Braj Mohanlal, my grandmother, and the construction was going on. A wall was to be constructed. It was weekend that was approaching. Three o'clock. The wall still needed some time. So it happened that my grandmother asked the mason if he could finish this wall this evening. He said, this wall is difficult to finish because it will require 500 blocks and to bring 500 blocks, make them available for completing the wall is a long effort. He expressed his inability on the ground, the blocks will take long time to reach. She said, if I can get the blocks by you in 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes, would you be able to finish the wall? He thought that it is an impossible job to bring 500 blocks in 15 to 20 minutes. We all, the children were playing. She called, said, boys, come. Bring these blocks here. And when you finish, whosoever finishes 100 blocks will get something. And believe me, in less than 15 minutes, five or six of us brought 500 blocks. It was a moment of happiness because we were going at, we were going to get something at the end of the day, at the end of the job and ultimately the mason, as far as his promise was concerned, has to finish the job. Something like this happens. When you are miserable, you find it is taking long. All the time you are looking at your watch, why is this man not coming? He will come on his own. He has started his journey. He is on the way. Maybe he is driving at a slow pace. Maybe he has taken a longer route as far as his the understanding of the Google map is concerned, as far as his, his intelligence is concerned. He does not know how to cut corners and drive, driving at a slow pace. It all depends on the individual. But if you keep on looking at the watch all the time, the waiting will be miserable and long. God cannot happen to a miserable mind. The happier the waiting, closer you are coming. If your waiting can be your total joy, God will happen that very moment. No time gap is needed. It all depends on your patience. But when I say patience, I do not mean a negative quality. I mean a joyous patience. Thrilled expected. It is going to happen. When you are going to, when is it going to ha happen is not the point. The point is it is going to happen. When I take count to the 300 in the multiples of tens, with every 10 completed, it becomes a choice that I have completed a certain journey. I have completed 10 more and then now I have to do only 90. It happened one of the scientists who discovered electricity. He was working on electricity and he was failing all the time. He is making an effort, one experiment that failed. So his family members start stop supporting him, his friends left him. Whenever anybody asked, he said there is 
only a certain number of possibilities. It may be 10 possibilities to attain to this fruition or infinite, but there is a number. I have to conduct maybe 10 experiments, maybe infinite number of experiments. I have done 350 and these have failed. Can't you see I have come 350 steps closer to my fulfillment? If the total number of experiments I have to perform to attain to this is 1000, that means 350 possibilities I have already excluded. Now only 650 more remain to do. This is the approach of a spiritual person. He knows very well that it is going to happen. And the day it happened, it was middle of the night. His experiment fulfilled. Light came. His wife suddenly got up and she was thrilled with the light. She said, what happened? Why there is so much of light? And Thomas said that the experiment succeeded. The outcome is the light. It all depends on how you interpret. Interpretation is the process that has to be understood very deeply. You can see a rose bush and you can start counting on thorns. If you count the thorns, there are millions. And in that very counting, you will become incapable of seeing the rose flower. Counting the thorns, being hurt by thorns, being pricked by thorns, your hands will become wounded. You will be angry. You will be frustrated. And in despair, your eyes will not be capable of seeing the rose. How can you see rose with so many thorns? Thorns will be floating in your eyes. Your eyes will be covered by thorns. You will not be able to see the rose. Even if you have a glimpse of rose, you will not be able to trust. How can rose happen amidst so many thorns? You know why you know only thorns. You know only the pain of thorns. Rose seems to be an impossibility. Maybe it is a dream. Maybe you have just imagined. Maybe it is hallucination or something. But in the very nature of things, it cannot happen. It is so contrary to the experience of thorn. When it becomes impossible, by and by you will become oblivious of the rose and then it does not exist for you any longer. But if you look at the rose, if you feel the rose, if you become rosy with the rose and if you allow the fragrance to move into your innermost core, if you feel the wetness of the flower, the dew drops on it, the sun rays dance. If you see the utter joy of the flower, dancing in ecstasy, incomparable beauty of it, in that very vision, the rose, the thorns starts receding. You may be on the bush, but they do not exist for you. They cannot exist for you. Your eyes are full of the beauty and the fragrance and the elegance of rose. And when your eyes are so full of rose, not only your eyes but your heart too begins to dance, then you will be surprised to find that the thorns does not matter. And when your eyes are full, a dance begins to happen. Even if there are 10,000 thorns for one rose, only the rose matters. The thorns do not matter. The whole outlook has changed. And you will look at the thorns with a new vision. You will see thorns not as enemies of rose, 
but as bodyguards the security for the rules they are guarding it they are friends they protect otherwise it will not be possible for rose to survive rose is so delicate the animals can eat it or anything can destroy it. thorns are there to protect it once you have started seeing the beauty of life ugliness starts disappearing it becomes at the most a shadow it starts if you start looking at life with joy sadness starts disappear you cannot have both heaven and hell together you can only have one it is your choice every moment life presents a choice to be happy or to be unhappy and you can have it any moment if you want hell you can have it right now if you want heaven you can have it have that too it is absolutely your responsibility and your choice i have heard at the pearly gate st peter's was interviewing the new arrivals st peter inquired name new arrival melvin st peter did you gam ever gamble drink or smoke when you were on earth melvin no sir st peter's did you ever steal lie cheat or swear melvin no sir st peter's were you promiscuous melvin no st peter's tell me what kept you there for so long if none of these things then this shows the mind of st peter's nothing about melvin another one i have heard rabbi jacobs said i need 50 dollars to get out of my debt so the person i keep praying to god to help but he has not sent it don't lose faith said the rabbi keep praying after the disciple left his house the rabbi felt sorry for him i don't make much money he thought but that poor man needs it i will give him 25 dollars out of my pocket one week later the rabbi stopped by the disciple and said here god sent this to you back in his home the disciple bowed his head thank you lord he said but next time you send money don't send it through the rabbi that group get half of it i asked for 50 dollars but the priest kept 25 half of that and gave me only 50 gave me only 25 not the 50 that i asked you so don't send next time the money through him it all depends on you how you look at things what did the disciple do the rabbi out of his compassion tried to give out of his meager income 25 dollars to help the disciple but the disciple had looked at it in a totally different way god do not send the money through him he seems to be a crooked i asked for 50 dollars and he kept the half and gave me the next half it all depends on you can see each day surrounded by two nights or you can see each night surrounded by two days and and it really makes a lot of difference let your waiting be joyous you are waiting for god for godliness let it be a song let there be a song in your heart let it, let there be prayerfulness let there be celebration only celebration is secret the whole life is secret once it happened that gautam buddha asked one of his disciples can you find anything which is worthless in life if you can bring it the disciple thought for many days 
and Buddha inquired every day, what is happening? Have you not found anything worthless? And after a month or two, the disciple came and said, sorry, I looked all around. I looked very hard. I could not sleep because you had put a question and I had to find the answer. But I could not find anything worthless. I could not find anything worthless. Then Buddha said, now another task. Find anything which has worth. How many days will you take for it? You took two months for the first and the disciple laughed and he said, no need to take any time. Just to look at this straw from the ground and he gave it to Buddha and he said, it is enough proof it has worth. He picked up this straw from the ground, gave it to Buddha. It is enough proof it has worth. Buddha blessed the disciple and said, this is how one should look at life. This is the right attitude. In Buddhist terminology, this is called Samyak Drishti. Samyak means right, Drishti means vision, right vision. And Buddha said, I am happy with you that you took two months and still could not find anything worthless. And if I ask you, you will find thousand things per second worthless around you. You could not find a single instance of something meaningless and now for the meaningful, for that which has worth, you have not taken a single moment. Yes, this is how it is. The whole life is sacred. Buddha has lived a rich life, spiritually rich. How can you say that life has nothing sacred in it? Every moment is sacred. You need to have the eyes to see that sacredness. God is not missing from existence. Only your vision is not yet turns towards it. You ask, it is long, long journey between preparation and the ultimate. The length of that journey depends on you. You can shorten it by your joy or increase, elongate it through your misery. It can be long, very long. It may not be so long, maybe very short. The goal depends on you. How long is not a fixed phenomenon. It cannot be measured. It is, if your eyes are full of sadness, you can create a long distance. It becomes long if you look at it through misery, anguish, anxiety, and antagonism. If your eyes are full of sadness, you create a long distance. If your eyes are full of joy, it is right there. It is now. It is this. It is here. It is now here. Not now and here. Now here. This is how a seeker has to look at everything. Every phenomenon, every circumstance, every situation. This is the ultimate flowering in meditation. This is the essence of the fasting month that is approaching on us.